Hey, my name is Mike, and in this video, I'll be teaching you how to farm the Core Crun Juggernaut from Garrosh Hellscream in Siege of Orgrimmar. It's about a 6% drop rate, and it drops on Mythic only, so make sure you set the raid before you enter, and double check chat after you enter to make sure it is set on Mythic. Uh, this raid is located in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms in Pandaria. In this video, I am a Fury Warrior level 110, item level 245. This was recorded on July 20th, 2018 in patch 8.0.1, so after the uh, BFA stat squish. So just a couple things before I get into this. First of all, I'm not doing my usual scripted thing. I'm kind of just talking free nilly, so hopefully I don't suck too much. But in addition to that, I'm going to keep the map open like I do with all my mount runs, just in case someone has never been in here and they want a better understanding as to where they are in the raid. Secondly, also, I never raided this when it was current content, so unlike my other mount videos, I don't really have any anecdotes or really strategies as to what the bosses used to be like. So I'm going to be kind of telling you what I kind of know about each boss, but I know enough to tell you how to found farm this mount so if I said it in case I didn't mention it it's about a six percent drop rate according to wowhead so anyway on this first boss Immersius uh, he's kind of the most annoying boss in this raid basically what you're going to do is you're going to uh, damage him until he dies and submerges in that water and when he does that he's going to spawn a whole bunch of ads around the room so it's going to be black ads as you see they're going to spawn in the black puddles and blue ads and the black ads you can kill and the blue ads you can heal if you have a healing ability and so what will happen is depending on how many ads that you kill or how many ads you heal, he will he'll respawn with less health. So I think in this video I had to, I had to kill him I think four times or something like that before he or before he died. So it's the most tedious fight. If you can as many ads as you can, ideally you just want to kill as many ads as you can. But if you if you're like a druid or something, you can throw some hots on the on the friendly ones. Go ahead and do that because that'll make this a lot quicker. But uh, this is easily the most frustrating, or not frustrating, but that's the most tedious fight in this place. But yeah, it, it's, it's pretty simple. It, 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 it is just tedious. Another thing that I also want to mention is that I do speed up a lot of the boss fights. It's kind of the more simple things, just because I don't want to make you... I think, I think without speeding anything up, it's like a 45-minute video, so I don't want to want to make you watch that. But in addition to that, when I'm just running to like different areas, I have sped it up a little bit just because it is pointless to have me walking in real time for you so that's also something that I, I wanted to do because like I said it, it is just kind of pointless and there was some some areas where I sped it up even more while I was walking uh, I do have my map open like I said so in case you get lost double check that but once you kill him he's gonna have a chest behind him that you can uh, loot if you want I highly recommend looting stuff in here because there is a lot of stuff that you can at the very least sell to a vendor for for a decent amount of income you are here for a mount, but it's, it doesn't hurt to get a little bit extra gold, plus some of the uh, cloths and um, other thing. I guess some, some BOEs as well might drop, but that you can sell in the auction house. But anyway, once you kill them, you're going to go up the stairs, and you're going to stand on that little altar where there, are light, where, there, where, there, where there is a light, and you're going to get an extra action button that you press. And once you do that, you're going to get a little cinematic, and then a door will open, and you have to go up some more stairs. So... I don't know why, but every time I do these videos, I I get like out of breath almost immediately. I think I need to like work on my cardio or something. That's weird. But anyway, you're gonna go up these stairs and go to the next boss, the Fallen Protectors. And this one is kind of annoying. Not so not, not not as much as the first boss, but it's a little bit annoying. So basically, for these guys, you need to kill them at the around the same time. I think you have to kill them within 10 seconds of each other because once as soon as one gets to one HP, he'll start doing this spell cast where he where he'll heal himself back up to full or I think to half health. And you want to do kill all three of them around the same time. But there's a whole bunch of ads that spawn around the room. You don't you don't have to kill them. There is one ad that fixates you, or and will root you in place. So that one you kind of want to kill. And there's a red line uh, indicating which one that is. It's it's targeting you, as well as one of the guys. I don't remember which which one. One of the bosses will do like a frontal strike. I think it's called Forgotten Strike or something like that. And it will stun you for like five seconds. I think while that's happening. So that's really annoying when that happens. And like two of the bosses are dead, and that's the last one up. And then you're stunned. And then you have to. By the time you're unstunned, those two bosses have healed up to half health again, like right, right now. Um, so that was the ability that was there. But yeah, so you want to try to make sure you don't get stunned. And so basically what, I, what I'm trying to say is that you want to, right after you get stunned, that's like if they're almost dead, wait until you get stunned and then kill them. So that way you're not getting stunned as you're trying to kill them. But once you kill uh, the, the Fallen Protectors, you're going to want to just mount up and head over to the uh, bottom at the south here to get to the cave. There's going to be a little Shaw thing you want to kill. It's not that difficult. And then once you kill it, you're going to go through the cave here. And it's going to take you to the next couple of bosses. And there is a lot of RP. 
with these next two bosses. Well, it's not the second one, but there's a lot of RP with this next boss as well as like other bosses in this instance. So I also cut that out just because I, it, it's just me standing around waiting for things to happen. In this room, what you're going to do is you're going to walk down into here and at the end there, uh, Noru Shen, I believe is his name, is going to be talking to the panda guy. And after about a minute and a half or so of, of RP, he's going to have, you're going to have the ability to talk to him and then you talk to him to start the fight. And there's another, I don't know, like 30 seconds or so of RP or something like that. And this boss spawns. And this boss, I have no idea what's going on for this boss. So all I know is that you can just literally sit there and kill it. He's going to spawn some, some Shaw adds that you can cleave down. Usually I have my whirlwind going, so it's not... I, I don't know what happens if you keep them alive. I don't know what these orbs are around the room, like I said. Never rated this when it was current content, so I can't really provide you with what strats used to be. But nowadays you can definitely just sit there and kill them. But that door that I just passed through, it's going to be about 30 seconds again or so while Norushen does some RP before it opens. Once you get through there, there you're going to go to this uh, room where there's a whole bunch of these um, little ads running around. They're very annoying uh, to kill because they move a lot. So I sped this up because it is kind of pointless. It is just ads that are in this one room. I don't know what the stuff on the ground is, that purple blue stuff. It's never ever been there before. So I'm not sure why that's there. But if your room doesn't look like mine does, that's okay. Because this is when I recorded this video it was the first time ever that I actually saw the room looking like this. So anyway, once you kill all those ads, a little bit of RP happens, not that much. But then the shot of pride will spawn and Again, another fight that's pretty simple. I think there's some swirlies that spawn around the room that you can move out of, but I don't, they don't do that much damage. I don't think I moved out of them, and if I did, uh, it was just instinct. But anyway, another chest that you loot, and then at the northwest or southwest, both of those areas, after about a minute of RP, a portal will spawn that will take you to Orgrimmar. So I cut that out, but the, as you see, the two portals there, you click it, you're going to go on this boat, and you're going to talk to the blood elf in the middle there and then after a couple seconds this guy's going to spawn a portal for you to go to the shore you're going to click that and you're going to go to the shore you can mount up here so i highly recommend you do that what you're going to do here is there is going to be there are going to be seven cannons that you have to explode and all these cannons have ads around them so you want to kill the ads first typically what will happen is you'll get stuck in combat because you might be doing some aoe so you can't click on these um bombs or whatever they are to to ignite them while you're in combat. So wait a couple seconds and you'll get out of combat and then you can ignite them. And what you want to do is you want to ignite all seven clumps of bombs to destroy the seven cannons and that will let you proceed to the next boss. So I set it up I think after the next cannon that I, that I set up. And like I said, there's ads on each cannon and there's bombs that you just press. You cannot be in combat. If you do, if you accidentally click the cannon itself and you get inside of it, it is a vehicle. So just like every other vehicle, you can just exit a vehicle and uh, you'll be fine. Once you do that, you're gonna wanna mount up again and you're gonna head back to where you, to, to the to the bridge, or not bridge, but that this area where you came from. After a little bit, there's gonna be some more RP once again, and a whole bunch of ads will then spawn in front of you and you're gonna talk to the one that is highlighted, who has a chat bubble of his head, and you're gonna start the fight that way. So some more RP again, and what's gonna happen for this fight, it's just an ad fight basically. So it starts as an ad fight. So Ads are going to spawn in the middle as well as the cannon or as a tower to your left side or the uh, west side. And uh, what you're going to do, I start with the guys in the middle and then I go to the, this ad in the, in the west, kill it, and then I just wait here until the next set of ad spawns. I wait. This guy on the, on the west is going to take a little bit to spawn. Uh, those ads can, can hit the, the NPCs a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. I kill that guy and then I go back to the ads to kill them and it's going to go back and forth. And you're going to do this, I think, three times. There is a lot of downtime between ads just because you kill them so quickly. But once you kill the, the next set, so yeah, these guys spawn, and then I head up into this guy, and then once you kill this third set, this tower is going to open up, or it should, and if it doesn't, just keep doing the ads till it does. And once the tower opens up, you're going to want to go to the top of the tower, killing all the ads in the process, and once you get to the top of the tower, there is a cannon. So once again, kill all the ads in the process before you mount this, I don't even know if you can mount the cannon before you kill the ads, but you're going to kill the kill the ads, mount the cannon, and you only have one ability, it's your number one ability, and you're going to shoot Gallicrass flying around um, the area you're going to shoot him twice. Make sure you shoot him twice and make sure you get automatically dismounted. Once you get automatically dismounted, there's a rope you can try to, I tried to click it here and it just failed, so I just jumped off and heroic leap down. Kill the ads down here. There's going to be some more RP, maybe some more ads you have to kill, but eventually Galacrass will come down to the ground and then you can kill him. So again, that was the, on, in the cannon. You hit the number one ability twice on Galacrass himself. You'll get automatically dismounted after some RP. The boss will fly, will fall down and, uh, 
you can kill him. Once that's done, you're going to once, once again mount up and you're going to head over to the next boss area. Um, unfortunately, there is some kind of invisible walls in this area, so you can't kind of skip through as much as you'd like. So you're going to have to, for the most part, you're going to follow the path. Uh, I think I tried to skip a couple of areas here and I got caught. Uh, I got caught slipping. Yeah, there was, it was, it just kind of, for the most part, follow the path. It's, it's pretty simple. It is a general layout of, what's this, Northern Barrens? Not Barrens. I don't remember what this place is called. I, Duratar? I don't remember. But you're going to head to the second boss. So this second boss, Iron Juggernaut, this is what the mount looks like that you're farming. It does not drop the, off this boss. It drops off the final boss, Garrosh Hellscream. But this is what the model of the mount looks like. Obviously just a lot smaller. On this boss, there is red circles you, cannot stand, you, can, you can move out of. I don't think it matters if you stand in them, though. If you're alive for long enough, he's going to spawn adds that will fixate you. And... Um, or they will, sorry, they'll, they'll start planting themselves, and you can just right-click them to explode them. You don't need to, though. They used to do a lot of AoE, I remember that. So once you kill them, you're going to head to this door, and um, it's going to take a couple seconds for it to be opened, and you can just, once again, mount up, and you can just run straight through here to the next boss. There's a lot of adds in this next area. You don't need to kill them. In the past, what you could do is you could kill this entire room. It is more loot if you want, and you can bring this boss out there just so you have more camera angles to work with. This is a very small room, but uh, I just kept the bosses in here because it's not that big of a deal anymore. So there is two bosses, I believe, and two, like, wolves. Wolves die pretty quickly, but all, all, all you do in here is just kill the bosses, obviously. They spawn a whole bunch of stuff. They spawn fire, tornadoes, totems, just a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't bother moving out of, and I see my health doesn't ever, doesn't ever really drop that low. Not that hard of a fight anymore. You don't need to bring them out to the main room anymore. It's not that big of a deal. So once again, once you kill them, mount up and head up, head to the next area of Orgrimmar. If you are familiar with Orgrimmar, you should kind of know your way around here. Uh, if you are not familiar, if you're an Alliance player, this is kind of what Orgrimmar looks like. Welcome, and this is, if you keep your map open, you'll have an understanding of what's going on. So you're going to be heading uh, to the, oh boy, Valley, the Cleft of Shadows, I believe, is what this next place is called. Before you get here, though, this set of ads will aggro from very far away, so you don't have to be very close to them. They will automatically aggro you, no matter, like, from a very far distance away. They don't move, unfortunately. It's kind of tedious to kill them, but once you kill them, once again, you can mount up and head into this little cave area. You can skip all the ads in here. Just kind of hug the wall and, and ride, ride up on it. And then you're going to fall down into here, this little area, and you're going to go into where Ragefire Chasm is. There is more ads here. There's some invisible ads here that you that one time I skipped, but in this case I kind of just ran into them. So you might be able to skip them. Maybe at 120 you'll be able to skip them a little bit easier. But um, yeah, there, there is invisible ads there. And these guys once again just hug the wall, kind of stay away from them, and you should be able to kill them no problem. So the next boss is uh, General Nazgrim, and there's a whole bunch of ads before him, non-elites. So feel free to just pull the entire room there. Those ads back there that obviously are not pulling, you can actually, if you kill this boss quick enough, they won't pull. But in this case, what actually happens, the boss spawns some ads, and when those ads spawn, it aggroes those trash packs back there, and you'll, ha you'll see that in this video. And if you do aggro them, you might as well just, may as well just kill them. So you saw the ads spawn, and these guys are aggroed now. So you can kill these guys, you can actually ignore them though, if you want to do this strat now. So there's an elevator here. You can wait for the elevator or you can just fall down and die because what happens if you die and you release, you immediately spawn in the next area. You can kind of save yourself a little bit of a walk, which is what I did, obviously. So if you do pull that trash pack, you can just ignore them and fall down the elevator and resurrect. It's not that big of a deal. Or you can wait for the elevator, you can kill those guys. It's up to you. But I wanted to show you kind of both killing the ads and falling down the elevator. So heading now into the next area, this, guy, this place is kind of, it used to be kind of confusing just because the map layout is a little bit weird. For the most part, only the only the ads near the doors is the are the ones you need to kill, um, which is which is nice. You can actually skip pretty much all these ads, um, and the ones up here on the bridge are also gonna. Generally, what'll happen with these ads is I got lucky, and the pat was actually not with the group in the middle. So usually I will have to pull all these ads because I walk right through them. But fortunately, in this case, just the uh, the pats were far away. I tried skipping them, but unfortunately I couldn't. But once you kill these guys, you're gonna head to the. Uh, just have a hiccups and burps now. And you're gonna head to the next boss, um, Mal Malkorok, I believe is his name. I don't remember really exactly what he does, but he does do a frontal cone ability, kind of drops his big, or, yeah, he knocks you up, which does a little bit of damage if you fall, he spawns some adds you can kill. Uh, if, you, if you're a warrior or like a, you have a slow fall or something, you can just do that. 
but uh, he does this frontal cone you can just move out of and don't stand in those purple things, I think. And I don't really know what else to do, uh, to be honest. I don't. As you saw, it didn't take that much damage. Once you kill him, you're going to keep walking forward. So do not go the way you came. Go, go continue as if you were walking forward. You can skip all the ads here. Sorry, my throat's getting all hoarse now. Uh, you can skip all the ads here. I think the next set of ads you're going to want to kill, obviously, are the ones at the door. And I tried to skip them. I thought you could get around this little brazier here. But unfortunately, you couldn't. So kill the ads. You can loot them if you want to, if you don't have to. These next set of ads you actually need to kill because what they do is they there's a lever there that you can see in the middle. So maybe don't kill them right on that lever. Maybe you want to pull them out. Um, I just killed them there. So it's not that big of a deal, but uh, you might kill them on the lever and make it a little bit difficult to pull. But this uh, lever, when you kill them, it opens that door to the right that I'm about to pan over to, that one right there. But this door is where you want to go next. And once you're in here, there is... You're, you're heading into the next... Actually, I don't even think you need to... I'm trying to think. I don't, I'm pretty sure you need to press that lever to open this door as well. But I might be wrong. Because I'm trying to think now. Because I don't think you have to go in that area that you open. So anyway. So uh, moving into this next area. These um, turrets things are kind of annoying just because they are like those one like that one ad that before the cleft the shadows that aggroes you from a pretty far distance away and they are obviously stationary so you can't wait you they, they won't come to you you have to go to them so uh there is some couple of ads a couple of ads that spawn as well so you want to kill them not that hard it's just kind of tedious but in this area you have two options you can go to this door or the one across the hall so i'm gonna go in this hall first a little bit of a cinematic and you're gonna go into this room where you're going to uh, fight off against three ad packs. So this one and then two more. So you're going to kill these. And there is a bomb that spawns and kind of goes towards you. And if, if it hits you, it'll like knock you up in the air, I think, or knocks you back. I don't really remember. Yeah, it knocks you up a little bit. It doesn't do that much damage. But once you kill three uh, trash packs, they spawn from these little, um, what are they called? Plumber things, tunnels, tubes, I don't know. You're going to actually go inside one of the tubes and it'll spawn you in the next boss's area, Siege Crafter Black Views. Again, I have no idea what this boss does. I think he spawns like a, um, like a saw that you need to maybe not stand in. But for the most part, I think I kill him before any mechanics really come into play. Once you kill him, you're going to go back into these tubes and go back the way you came. Relatively simple, quick fight, which is nice. The door is open. There is no cinematic that you need to, to, to endure once again. But now what you're going to do is you're going to go across the hall. So if you went in the, in, the, in the door that I'm about to go, if you went that way first, just come back this way. The door that I just was looking at right there, I believe even though the locked is green, it, um, it won't open because you have to kill these three bosses first before you can open that door because that takes you to the final boss. So the next boss is Siege, or sorry, the next, uh, next fight is uh, the Spoils of Pandaria. And this fight is just a straight up ad fight. It's kind of annoying. But so you're going to talk to this little console here. I don't know if there's a correct combination. I usually just click the first thing and it s starts the fight. So I don't know if there's a different combination you should be using or a good combination. But there's some RP and then two of the four doors will open. You can go into either one of them. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to see boxes all around the room. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to... There's going to be small boxes, medium boxes, and large boxes. You want to focus... You want to open, you want to open a, a few small boxes, but your primary focus is going to be the medium and large size boxes. And every time you open one of these, ads of some sort will spawn, and the big boxes hold like mini bosses. Uh, so as you see, I'm not really focused too much on the small boxes. I am opening a little bit of them. But you're primarily looking at the large and medium sized boxes. And as you kill ads, as you see, your, their essences are going into that little lever there, and there's a little um, bar on the top, top of my screen showing how full I am to being able to use that lever. Once you kill enough ads, that lever will become full, and what you, or your bar will become full, and what you can do is you can press that lever, and it will open the door to the next area, which you have to do. So, as you see, I'm pressing that thing, but the door doesn't open because I have to go to the next area first. So, the two doors that opened at the beginning of the fight, you have to finish both of those areas before the next area is open. There was a little chain that I pressed that I went up and I went to this next area to do the exact same thing. Focus on the medium boxes and large boxes, a couple of the small boxes as well. Kill the ads to open up the thing. So in each room there is, so for example in this room there was blue boxes everywhere, but it's some green ones as well. I never opened the green ones or like the, the odd colored ones. So in this room, for example, there's some orange, but there's the majority are orange or yellow boxes. And there's some green ones. I don't open the green ones because I don't, I don't think it matters. So I don't bother with those. 
But again, so once I killed that second room, the door opened so I can go into this next room. Did the same thing, hit the lever, go in the chain, and go into that fourth room now that, that I have not gone into. So, relatively simple fight. So you're just opening boxes, killing ads, and then moving with chains and, and stuff. So it's, it's, def it's, it's definitely not that hard of a fight. You have plenty of time to do it. I think you have like three minutes, and nowadays it, it, it's, it's, a very, it's a pretty quick fight. So once you kill that final lever, or once you hit that final lever, lever you, can, you can use the chain to go back up into the main room. There is some more RP, that orange bubble is going to stay around the chest, and once it goes away you can loot it and you can head to the next area, which, as you see in the map, it's just a straight, you just go straight. And so I sped that up relatively quickly because it was just so annoying to, to watch me going here. It's not that big of a deal. So the next boss is Thok the Bloodthirsty. He's a giant dinosaur. I don't know anything about this fight. I think ads used to spawn. I don't know why I keep saying that. I, I already mentioned it at the start of the fight, so I apologize if that's annoying, but... Uh, yeah, I think some ads spawn in this fight, but I don't I don't think I've ever seen mechanics for this fight, just because I usually kill them so quickly. So as you saw, there's a couple things I don't really know what they do, but I kill them relatively quickly. It wasn't that big of a deal. There is an ad that spawned behind me, as you see that dinosaur in the middle there. Didn't worry about it, but once I kill Thok, I'm gonna head back the way I came. I'm gonna go past the spoils of Pandaria and go back into that main room. So once again, if you went this way first, you're gonna go across the hall and kill Siegecrafter Blackfuse. If you went the way that I went in this video and you've killed Siegecrafter, you've killed, you've defeated the spoils and you've killed Thok, your your next door is now the middle one, and that's gonna take you to the final two bosses. So in this uh, middle door, which I believe you cannot enter until you've killed all three of those previous bosses, you're gonna go through here and you're gonna go to this little through this little tunnel. And it's going to take you to the next area where there's going to be, I believe, three packs of, of ads as well as a couple of extra stragglers here and there. So in this next room, what you're going to want to do ideally is not kill them in the center of the room just because there's going to be a crystal that spawns there to start the boss fight once you've killed all these trash packs. So I made the mistake of killing them all kind of where they stood and I had to wait a little bit for them to despawn because I didn't see that crystal. As you see, there is... Like I said, three trash packs as well as a couple stragglers here and there. So I kill them in the middle, uh, especially this big guy. The big guy is actually who you don't want to kill in the middle. I think the, the smaller trash packs are fine. Once they despawned, I found the crystal. And you just click on it, and then you start the fight. So there's always going to be three bosses active. Once you kill one, the next one will fly in. You have to kill a total of nine of these paragons. So basically what there used to happen was there was this bug that if you killed all three of them at the exact same time, the, bu the boss would bug out and you'd have to like hearth and reset the instance and stuff so i don't know if that's still a thing i never want to try so at, at most i i only ever kill one at a time uh, as soon as one dies the other two gain health gain all their health back so it doesn't matter if you kill if you aoe but i only keep i only i kill one at a time and if there's only one left alive i wait until the next one spawns or the second guy comes in before i before i continue just because i don't want to bug out the fight but yeah so making sure there's always at least one boss up if no more bosses are coming in, I start killing them, and I make sure not to kill them all at the same time because of my bug it. So once you kill them, you're going you're gonna to head towards the final boss, Garage House Green, which will hopefully drop them out for you. So a couple of ads you can skip in this hallway, and once you get to Garage, there is both stairs on the left and right side, or you can just jump down in the middle. It does not do that much damage. Most people just jump straight down the middle, so it's not that big of a deal. While um, you're waiting... For Garrosh Hellscream to become active, um, him and, ooh, you're going to be mad that I don't know this guy's name. Thrall, I think? I don't know who this guy in the middle is. They're having some RP. It's like two minutes of RP, so you can kind of chill out and wait. But once uh, Garrosh Hellscream becomes available to, to attack, you can go ahead and start killing him. One thing I highly recommend you don't do, like I did unfortunately in this video, was pop all your cooldowns on pull because he's not that hard um, at the start. He's not hard at all, but uh, some ad spawn, you can kill them. Once he gets low on health, he's going to run to the center, regain some, regain some of his health. He's going to some more RP and you can, you can pop. So usually what I'll do is you can pop your cooldowns here. What I usually like to do as you're going to see. So you get him down to like 50% health. I think and then he spawns you or puts you into this room. What you're going to do is you're going to kill. There's different rooms. I think there's three different rooms that you can go into. So you're going to kill all the ads and you'll, then you can start killing Garrosh. So usually what I'll do is I will pop all my cooldowns on Garrosh in this phase. Just to get this done and over with a little bit quicker. So uh, in this phase, all he does, he looks in one direction, puts a frontal cone down that's purple. I don't really know if it does that much damage. I usually just don't stand in it. 
and after a few seconds he will port you back into this main room. If you don't kill him quick enough, you'll keep doing that over and over again until he gets to a certain point. But if you kill him like I did, he will spawn in this giant gross amalgamation. You kill him once again, and then through here there's some more RP. And then what will happen is he will teleport to uh, Stormwind. There's some more RP, you're stunned for a little bit, and then you can attack him. You can pop your cooldowns here as well if you'd like. It's a little, it takes a little bit long to kill him. But once you kill him here, you're done. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. This was how to farm the Corcoran Juggernaut from Garrosh Hellscream in Siege of Orgrimmar Mythic. Make sure it is Mythic. It's about a 6% drop rate. And yeah, I'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.